Greetings viewers, Eric the Car Guy here with Justin Frischi, who is the son of Kevin of Calvinator Engines, which is where we are standing right now. And this is my new engine block that you are installing cam bearings into. Yep. We're gonna talk a little bit about cam bearings because nobody ever gets a chance to really see this process, at least for me. I always sent it to the machine shop, had the machine shop install cam bearings because they have expensive special tools to do it with. And cam bearings are buried deep down inside the block and you would need special tools to do that job. So. How are you, Justin? I'm fine. We're putting in the last cam bearing. Earlier we put in the ones that are further down mm -hmm. in and you talked about the methods that you use in order to line everything up. Because oh. I've never installed cam bearings. The machine shop's always done it because I don't yeah. have one of those. Right. right. These are expensive for what they are. Well, you know, you guys especially tools play the game. So that lines up with the oil passage there that... Yep. Yeah. I, uh, I can show you what I do. Uh, I stuck a T-handle out in the oil hole. Okay. And see they're not it's they're not, not it's straight not down the center. centered so you, yeah. So then I put a mark there with a sharpie. Okay. And then I marked the cam bearing. I was wondering I saw I you had the mark up. there and it was lined up with that. Yep. You're I mean, smart. <laughs> I could probably guess it, but I, I never get lucky. But you <laughs> but you're a machine shop, you know, you got right. all these you got standards. go too far it's like all over right no then you just go from the other side and put it back a little bit oh okay why are cam bearings important and why is getting them lined up important otherwise there's no oil feed that would be bad and on uh, some manufacturers the oil feed hits the cam bearing before it hits the mains which feed the rods so if you don't have oil feed through the cam bearings you don't have oil feed anywhere else so Oil pressure, very dependent upon bearings and the clearances and that things flow through them properly, right? Mm -hmm. I've said it before. This guy does it for a living. He knows what he's talking about. Anyway, show us. We got this last one we're putting in? Yep. And is this one you have to mark like the other ones or can you just see Yeah, it? this one especially. It okay. has two slots, the main slot and the side slot. Mm -hmm. Then we also have two holes in the block. The main oil feed and this one to the side. That one to the side, is that a return? Or? Uh, that feeds the front plate. Oh, okay. To uh, Through that little passage there? Yeah. This is your thrust plate. That little oil feed, all that does is feed this slot to give oil to the, the thrust plate so that doesn't wear out. And what helps, that helps locate the front of the cam, but what about the back? I mean, there's a certain amount of end play that you could, that's allowed and that's controlled by what? The cam always wants to go forward, so really that's all you worry about. Okay, and is that because the chain's on the front? Uh, it's more due to distributor. Okay, so and because it's meshing up with those gears, it helps pull it forward? Yep. And is that why um, sometimes you want different gears on your distributors with different camshafts? And there's a whole thing with that too, isn't that's it? That's due to the uh, cam material. Okay. The harder uh, cam cores need bronze gears. The cast iron cam cores, the everyday stuff, that you can use uh, cast iron gear. Okay. Or whatever the main. But the is. reason being is like one gear would eat the other, is that part of it? Yeah. Okay. And then that cam gear also drives the drive for the oil pump as well, right? Uh, yes. So in this case, I know it, it passes straight through and goes mm -hmm. down. The oil pump would be down on the bottom of the block here. And as the cam spins, it spins the distributor and it spins the oil pump. Mm -hmm. So it's got a lot of important jobs. Yes. Because without that oil, eh, we don't go anywhere. Without the distributor, we don't go anywhere. But especially without the oil. So you gotta line those holes up. Yep. Show us. And this is a much shorter tool than the one you had before. Yes, the other tool is a whole lot easier. Well, this, this one's not so much fun. Well, because you can, the other tool I noticed had that cone that yep. sort of lined things up and kept it all straight yeah. and true. But you, it, you can't do that on this one because there's this little machine surface 
and then it's cut out there and it just refuses to go in straight. I've tried it before, it doesn't work. So you can't come in through the back side and do no. it that way with the with the tool. So you have to come in through the front yeah. and it's like really hard to do. Yeah, the cam bearing just gets crooked and no then you pressure. have to break a set. No pressure. No pressure. <laughs> <laughs> and their cam bearings are also tapered. Yes. So the bearings that are way down inside are smaller than the bearings that are out here at the front. On this Ford, yes they are. Okay. So on a Chevy it would be just the opposite? Uh, Chevy uses two sizes. All right, but why would they choose to do the different sizes like that? Engineers. Okay. Well, I just wondered if there was some reason. Like you said, it always wants to move forward. I was thinking if it's larger on this side, it wouldn't be able to move backwards because they'd be, well, I guess it really didn't matter because they no. wouldn't move but a few thousandths of an inch. All right, install your bearing. I'll stop bugging you. You're sideways. Yeah. Like big time. No pressure. I gotta pop it back out on the other side. So this is the engine building table. Uh, just cam bearings and things. Oh, just cam bearings and things. You have other tables for other things? Those tables. <laughs> I see. They are nice. That's just easier to do it on this table because you can walk all the way around. That would be the tool we spoke of earlier. Mm-hmm. And that would be the specific driver that sizes? Like you're yeah. able to size that larger smaller yep and then there's uh three other different sizes if i can i'll try to find a link and put it in the description but i believe uh the cost was somewhere around 600 bucks <laughs> yeah this is why we have the machine shop do cam bearings and also they're really good at it because i imagine trying this myself and not knowing how to line everything up would be well not as successful probably go through a couple of sets of cam bearings before i got it right I do have broken sets of cam bearings. <laughs> See, you've got that experience going for you. Oh yeah. Experience is nothing but compounded mistakes. Exactly. Still good. Because you're awesome. <laughs> Notice I'm not even asking to try it. Can I do that? Nope. I hate this tool. <laughs> nope. I hate the sh I hate the stubby one. Well, yeah, because you don't have it lining up. Yeah, it's not easy. And it's it's an interference fit, so it's almost too big for the hole. Right. Shut up, internet. Mm. There you go. So it's just important that one hole is lined up? Uh, it's, uh, I was just checking the one hole. I'll check the other one. Because that one isn't. Isn't. Ah. <laughs> Nuts. Because that was like a perfect placement. You just like totally got it in there. All right. I mentioned those broken sets. I don't like reusing ones that I've already so I'm worried there. about has it crushed and lost some of that press fit I don't want any well, you, issues as a machinist you know metal and yeah. you know how it reacts to different stress levels and stresses and those types of things so you're that's where your experience comes in with doing something like this a guy in his garage might just throw that back in again and maybe it falls out and maybe it'd probably be fine yeah, maybe but fine. but you're not that guy no and my name's on it if it was my own stuff Maybe. All right. So it's Ford's fault for being all offset and doing weird yeah. stuff. Yeah. I. We don't do a lot of Fords here. A yeah, lot of small just, block Chevys. Because you do a lot of circle track stuff, right? Exactly. But as you were saying to me the other day when I stopped in, you were uh, commenting that you're game for just about anything, right? I'll do anything. Just to try it, just to see? Yeah. Within reason. Yeah. Anything within reason. Let's, let's add that on there. My, my machines are only so big. It's not the size of your machine, it's how you use it. Whatever. <laughs> are you 12? Sh shut up, Internet. Yes! <laughs> in here, I am 12. I keep telling you, I'm in Santa's workshop, working with one of his elves, and Santa's in the back, and it's just, this is Christmas. Like, okay. Ground zero Christmas. I guess I can't shoot for the middle of the hole. It's not going to let me. Yeah, it kind of looked like it, it was there, but not there. Yeah, I'm just going to have to split the difference, I suppose. Can you make them bigger? I could. 
I should be able to split the difference though. Okay. Machining, it comes down to little bitty everything. Everything about this build, and this is kind of, this is one of the reasons why I'm doing this project and recording all of it. Everything about it comes down to thousands of an inch. And if you haven't figured that out by now, then you shouldn't be doing this because going fast, making something handle, making, making this, making anything, comes down to really small little measurements and a felt tip marker. <laughs> and eyeballing it sometimes. And eyeballing it sometimes. Is that just regular? What kind of lubrication is this? That is energy, driven. Energy assembly grease. I'll link it in the description for you. So special assembly that, grease. It's different than uh, the liquid stuff that I've used. Like uh, if I remember like seal power or something like that. Yeah. Like had like a really thick oil that you put on everything yeah. as you assembled. And that's kind of expensive. Uh, putting it in cam bearings, you can get away with an axle grease. It'd be fine. Okay. Or wheel bearing grease. Well, once again, I don't think people at home are going to be doing this. I think it's just so that they can see the process. If you got $600 burning a hole in your wallet and you really want to do cam bearings. Well, there you go. You can call up your friends and say, hey, you need cam bearings? Add on Craigslist. <laughs> we'll do cam bearings for cheap. <laughs> Did it work? Cool. You win! Now to make sure the cam fits. Usually throw in the two rear cam bearings, test the cam, throw in another cam bearing, test the cam, throw in another cam bearing, test the cam. Because it's better to find out now. Yeah, that way you can later. isolate which one's the issue. So you find out which one would be the bad one at that point. And sometimes you can get away with using just a bearing scraper because there might be just a little bit of a burr, yeah, okay. a divot. I'm surprised you don't have one of those like long things that sticks off the back of those. I got a bolt. Yeah. Works good. I, I use the bolt too, but I'm just surprised that my method was machine shop worthy. I already spent 600 bucks on a camber right. tool. I am buying another That's one. That's actually an excellent point. <laughs> I mean, there are cool tools out there, but sometimes you just need to pick and choose. Yeah, sometimes you just need to let your stuff speak for itself. Ooh, that's a rotating camshaft. That's nice. That looks successful to me. Well, like I was asking earlier, though, what locates the back? Is there a bushing or something that ends up going in here? Or? Just a plug. Okay, so just a plug on the back. Like a big core plug. And then you try not to gouge it with the lobes. Yeah, that can because bearings are soft material and that cam is really hard material. <laughs> yep. But and a little sharp. Yeah, very sharp. Sharp pointy edges. Nobody bothers to childproof their engine parts anymore. No. Nobody it's thinks that. of the children. It's the expense. <laughs> it's too expensive to take care of the children. <laughs> uh, Justin, thanks for teaching us about cam bearings. No problem. It's been awesome. If you have automotive questions, please go to airatthecarguy.com, linked in the description, along with additional information. Google+, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Calvinator Engines, check them out. They'll be linked in the descriptions as well. Be safe, have fun, stay dirty. Go ahead, say it. Stay dirty. See you next time. Thanks for watching. <laughs>